Um, I'm gonna be just totally and completely insufferable and unbearable here for a little bit because I've never been more vindicated than I am right now. <laughs> so, I have a story that should be titled, Kyle Kalinske and every Bernie Sanders supporter was 100% right. That should be the title of this story. So this is actually in Vox, of all places, because Vox was uh, kind of open about their uh, dislike of Bernie Sanders and how they favored Hillary Clinton. But they're reporting on this new study. Listen to this. They say, Hillary Clinton's campaign ran TV ads that had less to do with policy than any other presidential candidate in the past four presidential races, according to a new study published Monday by the Wesleyan Media Project. Clinton's team spent a whopping $1 billion on the election in all, about twice what Donald Trump's campaign spent. Clinton spent $72 million on television ads in the final weeks alone. But, they continue, only 25% of advertising supporting her campaign went after Trump on policy grounds, the researchers found. By comparison, every other presidential candidate going back to at least 2000 devoted more than 40% of his or her advertising to policy-based attacks. None spent nearly as much time going after an opponent's personality as Clinton's ads did. When I made the argument, and when others made the argument, that you have to stop doing these ads, people in Hillary Clinton's camp came after us as if, like, we're disrespecting her. It wasn't about disrespecting her. It was about telling you, you're going to lose. You're going to lose to the orange-faced buffoon with a meerkat on his head who said, grab him by the pussy, I don't even wait, and he was a reality star, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. You're going to lose to that guy, it's going to be thoroughly embarrassing, and you're going to lose because you're running one of the worst campaigns I've ever seen in my life. But when we try to tell them to, like, actually look out for them, they're like, no, we're, fuck you, you fucking Bernie bro, sexist Bernie bro. You don't think Hillary Clinton's running a good campaign? That's because you're sexist. Well, we were right. We were right. We were right. We were right. Now understand, most people who voted for Bernie Sanders turned around and voted for Hillary Clinton in the general election. So this idea of like, well, the critiques that were coming from Bernie Sanders' campaign were obviously to, to malign her and smear her integrity and to you know, put her down, and they all wanted Trump to win. That's just not the case. That's just factually incorrect. So when we criticized her, it was because we're saying, hey, you're a really bad candidate, and also your record is really bad. So if you want to actually win this thing, here's the strategy you have to use moving forward. And they basically did the opposite of everything that they should have done. I mean, it's really cringeworthy, but I remember covering some of her uh, ads. One of them, I think one of her first ones, was like about her mother or something or her grandmother and it's like a 30 second ad or a minute long ad and it's just her talking about herself and I thought to myself you're not gonna win people over like that like this cult of personality that you're creating as if people what a lovely story she has a mother I have a mother oh my god we're so similar with everything I mean she's so relatable no, because you had the, she's reading off a cue card in the ad, and you have the perfect lighting, and she's sitting with perfect posture, and my mother or my grandmother went through X, Y, and Z, and this is, if there's a depressed factory worker, you know, whose factory is shutting down in Ohio, they don't give a fuck about you and your personal story and what's going on in your life. We're, you're not running, or you shouldn't be running for self-aggrandizement, the whole point should be, I have a vision for the American people and for the future, and I want to try to implement the policies that you want me to implement. But 25% of her ads focused on policy. In a world that made sense, 100% of your ads, I'm not kidding, would be focused on policy. 100%. And the other people, like, they're great by comparison, but even they're abysmal. At other candidates, about 40% of their... Uh, ads focus on policy. It should be a hundred percent. What are we doing here? Is that how shitty our attention span is? We have the attention span of a gnat. We're just like, well, you know, <laughs> personal stories. Huh? Huh? 
Like, that's not... It, it, but it's not us. That, that's actually an unfair point I just made about the attention span. It's them. Because here's the thing. When you really have to serve your donors, and when your whole job is to basically be a front for corporate America and the special interests that put you there, well then, yeah, you can't go in there promising people uh, to do what they actually want you to do, because that would snub your donors. And you care more about your donors, and in politics, you're going to represent your donors much more than you're going to represent a random uh, grandfather in Wyoming who needs your help. So it's just really sad, man. 25% of her ads were <laughs> focused on policy. Remember, the, so the rest of it was, they, they point out here, hey, the rest of it was going after Trump's personality. They definitely did a lot of that. Um, but what else they did is cliches and platitudes. We need to break down the barriers, yeah! And we gotta be stronger together, yeah! What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. What are you gonna propose a bill if you were to become president? And, it, uh, in the stronger together bill, the text of the bill says, And I hereby decree we shall be stronger together. Everybody vote vote on this. Break down the barriers. What barriers? And by the way, uh, the arguments contradict themselves all the time. So be, it, she would say, we gotta break down the barriers. Oh my god, these barriers are so bad for everybody. Barriers, barriers, barriers. And then the next sentence, when Donald Trump said, make America great again, she would go, how dare you, sir? America is already great. You were just talking about all the fucking barriers. And now you're like, America's great. Wh which is it? Are there all these barriers we gotta get rid of? And oh my god, it's a shitty situation and we gotta get rid of these goddamn barriers. Or is it, we're great, shut up, shut up. So, it was a campaign ran on cliches and platitudes and PC outrage and not focusing on substance at all. And even the way she went after Trump was, uh, with his personality, was stupid. Because she portrayed him as, she almost like played up the part about him or something about him that a lot of his followers loved. And the, even the anti-Trump Republicans did this too. I remember the anti-Trump Republican ad where it's just like a minute long of him cursing, you know, and they portray this as, ah, checkmate. <laughs> checkmate what? We showed him cursing. You think you could be president? <laughs> He's cursed. <laughs> and people looked at that and they went, fuck yeah, I curse, he curses. We're adults doing adult shit. So you're going to be the president of the United States and I'm supposed to care about <laughs> the naughty language that you use. <laughs> Turns out when people want to pay their fucking bills and not go uh, bankrupt because they had to go to the emergency room the other week, turns out that they actually would maybe prefer a guy who seems like a down-to-earth straight shooter who curses than somebody who is fake. Let me give you the politician rhythm and cadence and show you how... how polished I am and you should vote for me based on that. No, it turns out people are angry and there's a populist rage and fervor in the country and they go, who's gonna represent me? I don't know, that guy seems like more down to earth, he's cursing and shit, so yeah, let's go with that guy. So they took something that was a strength of Trump and they tried to say, ah, this is why you can't vote for him. Meanwhile, on actual policy grounds, you could point out that he contradicts himself every eight seconds. Say, hey, wait a second, you said you're not in favor of uh, you said, um, you're not in favor of intervening in Libya now, but you are- you're on tape saying we should go in, in there and take out Gaddafi, ASAP. Which is it? Why are you contradicting yourself? You could talk about the fact that he said, uh, we need to- we have to take out their families. Nobody spoke about that. It's amazing. He- on fucking live TV, he said, let's murder civilians. And they're like, well, let- anyway, here's an ad on him cursing. What? What? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It, like Hillary Clinton, he was on both sides of virtually every issue. I mean, you could run a fucking highlight reel of him. I'm uh, for abortion. I'm against abortion. Uh, whatever the fucking issue is. So you can show people you're, you're not voting based on policy because you can't be because everything is... He's been on both sides of virtually every issue. Or you could highlight the negative policies that he, you know, he's pushed for. And you could hammer away on that. When he said we have to keep... Uh, we need to keep wages lower. What the fuck does that even mean? He said that when he was asked in a debate about minimum wage protesters who were outside of the arena. And he's like, uh, wages, we need to keep wages low. Okay, then all, everything he says from then on about how he's populist and he's for the people, you go, no, you said you want to lower wages. 
You that's not populist. That's not for the people. That's you. Uh, you know. But being an asshole and not understanding what it, poor working class people go through. So, this is the stuff you could have done, but no, she, no, 25% policy, man, 25%. And everybody else sucks too, 40% policy. By the way, they didn't give, like, um, okay, okay, here's the line. They said, going back to at, uh, at least 2000, the candidates devoted m more than 40%. Um, so that sounds to me like some people were higher than that, but some people were at about 40. I'd be very interested to see what Bernie Sanders was, because I think his campaign was almost totally policy focused, which is why he went from some obscure senator who's a thousand and six years old, who doesn't comb his hair and has bad posture and had no followers at the beginning to winning 22 states and getting 47% of the vote against the democratic behemoth. Um, but yeah, everybody should have been like 100% policy because everything else is just fucking noise. Everything else is just, you know, distractions, look away. This is, uh, let me t not tell you what I'm actually going to do in here. And that's, this is one of the main reasons why people couldn't stomach voting for Hillary Clinton. Because that's what they got. They got the impression she's in it for herself. Um, and all she's doing is spewing cliches and platitudes and she feels entitled to it. And she's not even talking about concrete things that she's going to do to try to fix the country and help me with my life. And Trump, although he is also just a buffoon and a, and a silly narcissist, the reality is when he was on the campaign trail, at least he kept hitting certain points that resonated. You know, there are some people who are the so-called deplorables who voted for him because he said bigoted shit like keep out all Muslims and uh, deport all undocumented immigrants and do nationwide stop and frisk. Some people voted for him because of that. But there's no way he could have won without going around and doing the, you know, I'm against TPP, Hillary Clinton's for outsourcing, yeah, I'm for the, for the workers. So, uh, even with his, like we were talking about before, with his comments of, I want to lower wages, he was able to override that because when he was on the campaign trail and when he was doing his rallies, he would be, oh, I'm against TPP, I'm for the workers, I'm against TPP, I'm for the workers. And the way to combat that is to not do your stupid cliches and platitudes and talk about his personality. The way to combat that is to say, no, you said lower wages for workers. And let me give you a list of 14 other things that you fucking said that are policies that would hurt the workers and hammer away on that and hammer away on my vision. If she was unapologetically arguing for single payer health care, if she was arguing for paid vacation time by law, maternity leave, paternity leave, make the minimum wage a living wage and tie to inflation. You know, if, if you only hammered away on the policy, you would have won, but you didn't do that. And we fucking told you so. And now this study proves us right. Only 25% of her, of her ads on TV were policy focused. That's so condescending and so pedantic and looking down your nose at the American people. You know, these peasants will never understand if we use those kinds of arguments. So let's, uh, let's focus on the, the attitude of the person we're running against and say, oh, aren't we so respectable and isn't he so sad? Let's vote for us based on that. Well, how'd that go?